Hello there, this is the, oh god, I don't, I'm recording loads of videos on one day and going to release them over time. Anyway, this is the new Orc and Goblin Arcane Journal that's been released recently. Uh, I thought I'd do a bit more of a considered take on it. Uh, I'm using the e-reader, which as you can see is horrendous. It's, uh, it's It makes it so difficult to actually read it. Zooming in doesn't work. Like normally, you have to do, oh God, I don't know how to zoom in. I hate e-readers. Don't know why they can't just give us PDFs, to be honest. It's so stupid. Because um, it's not like you can't email this file to other people, is it? Whatever. So that's where the Orcs and Goblins are. Historically, this is what they're saying. They're in the Badlands, mostly, uh, which is, again, they've not, they've not messed with the lore at all. That's pretty accurate. Uh, they are elsewhere as well, so once you start going through the book, there's some stuff about that. So there's some stuff about where they are, uh, you know, Massif Orgal, uh, which is in uh, Bretonia, and there's a big uh, war going on in northern Bretonia at the moment, uh, in Coron. And there's some wires coming in all over the place, really. There's another orc, uh, goblin, sorry, encampment in Tal uh Just near, just up the river from, uh, sorry, just downstream from Nuln. The city-state of Nuln. And you get a nice little ambushy sort of battle plan, which is quite cool. With some dwarf carts and stuff like that. Um, and there's some orcs and goblins and stuff. There's the most disgusting kit that Games Workshop have ever produced, I think. I just hate it. It's just there's something about it. It reminds me of my mother. Uh, don't like it. Uh, okay, so we've got two, as as is seemingly tradition now. There's two sub-factions. There's a nomadic wah. Wah. And there's a... Uh, Troll Horde are the two the two new options. So Nomadic War, you've got the same kind of points, um, limitations. So, you know, you can spend half your points on characters. 25 must be core. Cool, 50% can be special. 25% rare. You've, they've also got some mercenaries. So you've got a Bone Grinder Giant. And Badlands Ogre Bulls that are all subject to misbehaving mercenaries, as described on page 279 of the Warhammer rulebook. So let's go have a look at that now. Uh, of course, page 279 isn't 279. Misbehaving mercenaries, blah, 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 blah. Prior to deployment, on a roll of two up. Uh, normal on a roll of one you have to roll on this thing uh, so they can gain ambushes and come on a reserve uh, minus one leadership for the duration uh, stupidity uh, or minus one movement and initiative. So they do, there's no, they don't turn up. It's just they could be worse than usual if they're mercenaries. Okay, cool. So you've got a Black Hawk war boss. Uh, now, there's something about Black Hawks on this. How do I get rid of that so I can make it bigger? I just oh, absolutely hate this bloody e reader format. It's so stupid. Right, so the what, Nomadic Wire's special rules. Uh, any number of Wolf Riders may have ambushes at the cost of one point per model. I think, is it one unit per thousand at the moment? Something like that, isn't it? Uh, where's the Wolf Riders? Oh, no, the, none, none of them can have ambushes. No, it's reserve move and feign flight that you can give them. Ooh. So maybe ambushes in addition... And uh, characters can have ambushes. So basically wolf riders arriving from everywhere. So that's that's pretty good actually. Because like some of those units. Because they're quite cheap actually. So having like. Uh, where are they? Having like three of these. You know. 
are only 10 points each. You know, you might have like 10 in a unit, so that's 100 points. So for like 300 points, you could have three units that just arrive later, kill war machines, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty good. Um, orc model that's mounted on a war bore gains impact hits. Or boar boys get impact hits. AP1, strength of the war boar. I mean... Wow. Um... Uh, and not to one or ball boys mob per thousand may have the vanguard special rule for plus one point wow that's like that's really really good I mean it doesn't mean does it mean turn one charges yeah it does doesn't it because only just but Because uh, you can get plus three to your charge range and uh, ooh, pardon me, your charge range and um, roll if um, so. There's a spell that gives you plus three to your charge range and roll. I forget what it's called. Uh, here we go, or something. Anyway, so if they've moved, if they've taken a vanguard move, right, so they've moved seven inches up the field, they can then go another seven. They've got a swift stride, 16. Uh, seven plus nine in is 16, but add the other, the other three, and you've got, you know, 19 maximum charge on boar boys. Uh, so 19 plus seven is 26. So turn one charges for, and you can do that for naught to one per thousand points. You know, turn one charges with boar boys is is now a goer. So the alpha striking orc list is back on. Cool. I like that actually. I think that's pretty good. Oh yeah, and also they're going to be doing impact. <laughs> uh, war boars have only got strength three, so strength three AP one impact hits though. So that's pretty good. Um, Ooh, yeah. Um, any Goblin Wolf Rider exchange open order and skirmishes with close order and horde. So you can put them in big blocks. Uh, and horde means that essentially you could have a big block of like 20 of them in like a 5 by 4 block. Uh, and then they get close order and three ranks, which is pretty good. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure why you'd really want to do that. But um, maybe for like, if you're flanking in a unit that your Wyvern has gone into, so you want the combat res. Uh, all characters within a nomadic war army must be mounted. Of course, everything's mounted. And Black Hawk bosses are not subject to the Da Boys or Quell Impetuosity special rules. Black Orc bosses. So Da Boys is basically you've got to take a Black Orc unit for every character, and you've got to take a character for every Black Orc unit. Uh, so War Boss and Big Boss. So you don't have to have a Black Hawk mob to have a War Boss or a Big Boss. So you can take multiple Black Hawk War Bosses and Big Bosses, but you don't need... So for each Black Hawk mob you have, which you can't... I don't think you can take a Black Hawk mob anyway. It wasn't part of the army selection, was it? Uh, Black Hawk Bull Chariots. Yes, yeah, so there's no Black Hawk mobs anyway. So that's why they've removed that rule, because you can't satisfy it. Okay. Uh, and they're not subject to Quell Impetuosity either. Okay, well, that's all right. Um, and then, so let's have a look at the Troll Horde first, then we'll have a look at the rules for the miniatures. So this is like a pretty standard 
uh, list. Except troll mobs, you've got to have one per thousand points. At least a third must be spent on core. Not uh, to one additional troll mob may be taken as a core choice per troll hag taken. So troll hags are now characters, so you can spend half your points on troll hags. And then you can take lots of troll mobs. Although the rule of three at tournaments means you'll have three of a unit. And a troll mob is, you know, sadly encompasses all the different types of, all the different types of troll. So, it'll be at the end of infantry, won't it? There we go. So, a troll mob is either common, river, or stone. You can't mix. You just pick one of each. So, sadly, at a tournament, you only have three of these units, which is a bit rubbish, but whatever. Um, and then you've got orcs, goblins, spider riders, wolf riders. You know, there's no black orcs. I don't think you're allowed to take any black orcs. There's no orc boys. It's just trolls and goblins, basically. Uh, you're allowed a boar boy mob and some boar chariots and some wolf chariots as special. So you're allowed a bit of cavalry, but it's mostly just trolls and giants. Uh, models with the regen rule may re-roll failed regen saves caused by non-magical attacks. Um, that's the wrong book. Uh, so... All trolls have regen five up, so they get regen. They get to re-roll that. So that's pretty good. Unless the character is fleeing, friendly troll mobs and troll mobs may use the command range of a shaman, goblin shaman, or troll hag can use. So troll mobs get like inspiring presence from basically uh, orc shame. Sorry, from shamans or hags. And Troll Tongue, Orc Shames and Goblin Shames within the Troll Horde Army, no spells from the Law of Trolls. So we've got a special character, Kick Nick Tooth Snatcher, who's 105 points. I think he's pretty good value. To be honest, he's basically, if you want a normal Orc and Goblin list, but you want a bit of the stuff from, you want some like, you know, mega scouty, um, uh, Goblin Wolf Riders, you know, this this one this one helps because you can give a Goblin Wolf Rider mob ambushes with him. Um, this it and run is great. So should they win a round of combat, Kick Nick can fall back in good order rather than make a follow-up or pursuit move. So they don't have to roll for that. They just fall back in good order <coughs> if they win a round of combat. So Kick Nick in like a decent size unit of like 15 goblins is pretty good he's also got chariot runners which obviously goblins have so uh, goblin wolf riders have so essentially uh, chariots can draw a line of sight through and charge through goblin wolf riders so you know they're pretty good uh uh and then he's got uh when he charges he causes fear which makes the unit immune to fear, of course. And he gets plus one combat result. So all of that for 105 points is an absolute bargain, I think. And he's got a pretty good magic weapon as well. Um, you know, so, you know, you can either go strength six, AP one, or you can go strength four, AP two, multiple wounds two. Which, you know, I mean, that weapon itself is worth like 50 or 60 points. That's worth... Probably about thirty or forty. It and runs probably worth another twenty. So that's probably worth another like fifteen or so. So the the stuff that he's got is worth about one hundred and fifty points, let alone his base profile anyway. So he's an absolute bargain. Oh, kick Nick. Uh, then we've got Og Og Drud's Swamp Digger. Uh, again, it goes a Norkin Goblin list. Basically, again, if you want a bit of the troll stuff. In a normal orc list, this is the character that you do. I mean, obviously, he's good in a troll list, but he allows you to do bits of that. So he, he has inspiring presence on trolls, that which is obviously he would get if he's in the troll faction. But if he's outside it in like a normal orc and goblin list, uh, then he can he can do that there. So he can go with your trolls, give them leadership eight, which is pretty good. Um, he gets lookout sir from trolls as well, which is also good. Uh, regardless of the size of them, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, 
he gets plus one to cast as long as he's near two trolls, basically. So troll mob with unit strength six, that's, that's two. They got unit strength three each. So as long as the troll mob has two of them, he gets plus one to cast, which is pretty good. Um, he's got a six up save, which is neither here nor there. Regen five, which is pretty good, but he's flammable, so meh. And he's got a fairly decent stick, which makes him strength six, AP one. Um, and if he for each wound he uh, inflicts, he say he can so he can heal himself with his with his with his stick as well. So that's pretty good. And he's got elementalism and troll magic. So yeah, elementalism of course being plague of rust. So he can do plague of rust. Just can't pick it. Uh, didn't one of them. Yeah, he's also he can pick it because he's got a law familiar. So he's just got. I think this is the first time I've seen like a special character with just like a normal magical item. But he's got a law familiar, so he can pick his spells as well. So he's awesome. I think for less than two hundred points. Yeah, he's only level three, but still, all that stuff <coughs> makes him pretty good. If you're taking trolls, troll hags are toughness five, six wounds, two hundred and thirty-five points. Level 1 wizards. They can be level 2, so they go to 270 points, and they can take magic items. They've got regen 5 up, you know. They've got several special rules. So they've got indiscriminate hunger uh, when uh, she's in combat. Uh, the unit must make an initiative test, and if she fails, she if the unit fails, then she eats one. And if it passed, does does nothing. But if she does cause wounds with indiscriminate hunger, so she does eat one of the... Uh, or she does cause a wound on whoever she's in combat with, then uh, she gets to heal one back, which with six wounds at toughness five. She counts as having heavy armor, but she doesn't have heavy armor, so she can still cast a couple of spells, battle magic and troll magic. She'd want troll magic. You'll see why in a sec. She's got motherly love. So she's a bit like a giant. She doesn't attack normally. She rolls on the table. And motherly love involves getting her big melons and either smothering people with them, uh, hitting them with a stick, or mithering them. Uh, so, ease. Smother. The troll hag throws her massive arms around the foe in a terrible embrace. <laughs> Uh, five inch blast template strength six AP two <laughs> strength of user is strength six so hit by a strength six AP two mortar avid like oh that's horrendously good um not reliable but horrendously good mother uh, model is hit, suffers, so she picks one model in the fighting rank, takes D3 plus one wounds, no armor or regen, but ward saves. So, she basically takes a big stick and just crumps a model in the front rank. Like a champion, probably. Or like, if you've got a battle standard bearer, it's just dead, pretty much. D3 plus one, like, m mortal wounds. Uh, or she mithers the unit doing d6 plus one hits at strength six no armor saves and minus one leadership like she is so good in combat just like d6 plus one hits like like hits hits like what that's like giving her 10 attacks at ap4 like for 235 points she's just horrendous to deal with minus one to hit during combat because of slimy shanks like she is just Ugh. and if you're taking a normal green skin list she can take her as a rare choice if you've got a troll mob like but she's just absolutely disgusting. Like, so good in combat. Shooting's actually going to struggle against her a little bit. Like, 
She does have large target though, so she you can always shoot her and you can pretty much always see her, apart from if she's behind buildings and stuff, but she's absolutely disgusting. Um, oh, and also she can vomit on you, of course. Strength 3, AP2 breath weapon. Like... And troll vomit she can use in combat as well. Make. So she can do a little mini sick at the end of combat after she's done stomps. She's got D6 strength 6 stomps. Because she's a large target, there'll be thunder stomps, so AP2, apart from against monsters. So she's absolutely, she is a damage dealing machine. Like a high elf prince on a dragon will struggle to do as much damage as a troll hag. But that high elf prince on a dragon costs twice as many points. She, troll hags are just, I don't want to say it because they've not been out for very long. But it feels a little broken. It feels a bit too good. Um, but we've not seen them on the table yet. So we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Badlands Ogre Bulls are ogres, uh, but they can uh, take heavy armour. They're not restricted to light armour. Um, they can be taken by anybody who's got mercenaries. So these are these are Dogs of War. This is the first time we've actually seen an actual Dogs of War unit, and it's the Badlands Ogre Bulls. So you can take Ogre Bulls in any, any, any army. They look like this. Um... So and also they've got motley crew, so you can give them like iron fists and great weapons and all sorts really. So they're I, I really like them. I wish these were the ogre bulls for the ogre list, to be honest. I wish that was like this, but these are better than them. Black Orc Boar Chariots are strength five, uh toughness five chariots with four wounds. They've got a three up armor save, so they're pretty pretty sturdy. Um they do a lot of high quality impact hits it's a heavy chariot so they're ap2 i really like them uh i think they're better than orc boar chariots to be honest but um uh black orc crew there's two of them yep then we've got a bone grinder giant these are the forge world mega giants they're absolutely huge i'm really tempted to get one but they are 150 quid each so maybe not this month um they're like giants but better basically they've got loads of cool attacks i'm not going to go through them all all the cool attacks are pretty good um but like just as a comparison like ed but right oh that's the same as the uh the um mother isn't it not smother child or whatever I suppose that's disgusting as well. Like crush underfoot. This is being hit by a strength seven AP three mortar. It's just absolutely disgusting. I suppose they are low initiative, but like eight wounds and toughness six, it's going to be really difficult to get rid of. I think it only counts as having light armor, though, doesn't it? Yeah, light armor is its only defense. So its defense is toughness six and eight wounds, really. But all of this is really horrible. It's a bone grinder giant. Is is dogs of war. For orcs, warriors of chaos, and beastmen. So beastmen can have them. Chaos warriors can have them. Orcs and goblins can. So finally, we've got the law of troll magic, uh, which the signature spell is an is a is a is an enchantment, uh, which is uh, pretty good. Rerolling fail stupidity tests. So if you've got a lot of trolls, obviously that's pretty useful. Um, the uh, which which one's really good? There's a lot of stuff that helps with stupidity, basically. Uh, uh, Place as small, three inches. No, that's the thing. Magic missile, D3 plus one. Uh, uh, uh. No, they're not, not really very good. Regen, like I read somewhere about regen stacking. I don't think it does. Uh, but yeah, you can essentially give a unit of... That's pretty cool, especially... So imagine giving like a unit of Blackhawks regen 5. You know, 
because uh, you give them a ward save of five as well. So anyway, magic items. We've got a bigger choppier axe, which is basically a great weapon with killing blow. Um, Martog's best basher is a pretty decent weapon, plus one weapon skill initiative, which is quite useful, and it gives plus one strength AP two attacks, uh, but it does require two hands. So it's not quite as good as the Chaos Rune Shield, but, um, you know, not far off. It's got a better AP, but requires an extra hand. Uh, the rest are, you know, um, pretty okay. Uh, Dead Ard Armor is great. Plus one toughness, full plate armor for Black Orcs and Orc bosses. But yeah, I mean, you, you imagine on a Wyvern, you've just got a toughness seven Wyvern with a Black Orc boss on it. God, sorry, I've got something with I. Uh, <sighs> spiteful shield. If you roll a one to hit against somebody with a spiteful shield, you take a strength for no AP hit. So that's I quite like that. I think that's pretty good. Sparkly wizard finder is a bit expensive. Forty five points. Magic resistance two is good. Hatred wizards is very very limited use. And a bit too expensive, I think. <coughs> um, angry lads, you can make somebody make a unit frenzied, but you can do that with orcs anyway, just by taking their armor away. Because um, you can give them like frenzied and like a six at war tattoo thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Banner of the Wilds. Actually, I think you'll see that a lot. It's quite useful being able to just get move through cover because you don't get your minus one to your movement which means you don't get minus one to your charges, which is important. And also it means you get to reroll dangerous terrain checks, so you very rarely fail dangerous terrain. Where, you know, if you're failing dangerous terrain checks with heavy cavalry, it's quite it's quite painful. Um, Necklace of Blessed Teeth is pretty good if you've got an armor ward and regen save, because you can reroll ones on all of them, which is pretty good. And uh, the thinking orcs hat just to remove impetuous is very good, uh, and they get a plus one initiative. So for twenty five points, I think that's a pretty much a must take if you if you're running an orc heavy list with lots of impetuous stuff. Idol of Gork, as I've said in another video, is absolutely nuts. Plus three range on your spell, but once per turn you can re-roll a casting roll. Not a failed casting roll, but a casting roll. So they ruled for the purposes of High Elves and Dark Elves that they can't use their, you know, Liliaths or Hecate's uh, blessing to re-roll a miscast because a miscast is not a failed casting roll. However, that just says casting roll. It doesn't say failed. So a miscast is a casting roll. Uh, all you know, successful, failed. So the three types of casting roll are fail, success, um, uh, ultimate success, sorry, where you roll a double six, and also miscast, where you roll a double one. So you can re-roll any of those. So for 40 points, that's just mega. Uh... And the Hagsbrew, you can know spells from the Law of Troll Magic, which isn't that good, really. Uh, and that's it. <coughs> Dead happy that giant's coming back. Really like that model. Really, I, I really like Orcs and Goblins. Like my problem with Orcs and Goblins has always been, you know, which which ones do I actually collect? Which ones do I actually buy? Because I like all of them, really. Um, and that's always been my problem. Like, do I go for trolls? The troll hag is great. I just... The model, I just find so vile. Um, do I go for a nomadic thing? Or do I just go, like, loads of black orcs? Implacably advancing on the battlefield for a crumping. Don't know. Don't know. Black orcs are great, though. Like with all the stuff you can put on them, like you can give them extra AP and stuff, and yeah, they can, they just carve through anything. Um, cool. So that's the new Arcane Journal for Orcs and Goblins. Apologies, it's taken so long. I've just been really super busy. Uh, I hope that's been useful. If you've liked the video, there there is indeed a button for that. Uh, and if you've got this far, it would be nice if you'd consider. Uh, whether this video has earned your subscription or not and if it hasn't 
uh, keep watching and maybe the next one will. Or, you know, any comments, let me know. I've, I try to respond to all comments if I can. Um, so, yeah, always happy to have a bit of a chat. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching and I shall say toodaloo.